Recently, I was watching my roommate play Halo on heroic difficulty. Since we had only ever played Halo on Legendary before, I was astonished when he shot an enemy and it died. This strange phenomenon was so enthralling, I decided I had to experience it for myself. So I set out to play every mainline Halo game, starting with... The game begins and we see a ship fleeing from an attack by an alien civilization known as the Covenant. The ship's AI, Cortana, assists by doing her best impersonation of a goldfish she had when she was but a young microchip. But unfortunately for us... So it's time to call in the big guns for any chance at survival. John 316. AKA us, the player. Captain Keyes sends us to fend off the Covenant while he crashes the ship onto the surface of the big metal donut in space. After a brief detour into the Autumn's AC unit, fighting both my inexperience with the controls and the Covenant all the way, we managed to board an escape pod with a group of Marines and land on Halo, where they all immediately die. Upon exiting the escape pod, the Covenant checks up on us to find out that we are, in fact, not dead, which means they are about to be. There are more Marines up ahead who have similarly landed in hot plasma. Fortunately, we help them introduce the Covenant to a new delicacy called lead. After the battle is over, air support comes to pick up the Marines and drops off the greatest gift imaginable, the Warthog. For those of you who don't know, the Warthog is completely invincible in Halo 1, meaning you can attack enemies with reckless abandon. Unfortunately, we are not, and since I'm still not used to the keyboard controls, that isn't going to work for me. After far more attempts than I'd like to admit, I manage to activate the underground bridge and begin tracking down the other escape pods to help any surviving Marines. After a few arduous battles, we save the Marines and find out Captain Keys has been captured by the Covenant, so we immediately move in to save him. At this point, I feel the need to bring up that I'm playing the Anniversary Edition of Halo 1, which makes some very interesting changes to the level design. For example, the only time the flashlight is ever necessary in Anniversary Edition is the flashlight tutorial, as the remastered graphics are brighter than a hydrogen bomb's explosion at point-blank range. This makes this level, which was originally intended to be played largely in the dark, much easier in some areas. However, the remastered graphics also come with a downside. Halo Anniversary runs on the original Halo engine, simply overlaying the graphics on top of the old layout. This means there are many instances where the hitboxes for objects do not line up with the way they appear, meaning things like this will happen. That, however, doesn't stop me from blazing my way through the outdoor section of the level with ease. What does stop me, however, are the two hunters guarding the entrance. After quite a few attempts, I enter the ship Captain Keys is being held captive in. This brings us to, in my opinion, one of the hardest parts of Halo 1. When you enter the ship, you are locked in an enclosed area with enemies coming at you from closed off hallways on all sides. This wouldn't be much of a problem if one of the enemies that spawn wasn't an invisible energy sword elite. If you don't spot these guys immediately, they will either slaughter your entire support team or kill you in one hit, forcing you back to your last checkpoint. If that wasn't bad enough, after cleaning out the room, you are immediately greeted by two more hunters. Luckily enough, I managed to kill them on my second attempt. I fight my way through the Covenant ship and encounter Captain Keys, who we must now escort back to safety. Unfortunately for me, the Captain appears to have lost the will to live, and consistently runs into the line of enemy fire, resulting in... Regardless of Keys having been trained by kamikaze pilots, I managed to escort him off the Covenant cruiser. With Keys rescued, we must now siege the map room of Halo in order to find out where the control room is. After successfully storming the beaches of Normandy, air support brings us our old friend the Warthog, which finally has its time to shine. Our invincible companion absolutely breaks this level in two, making us an unstoppable killing machine as long as we have it, which can be done in some rather unexpected ways. Unfortunately, we can't take the Warthog with us everywhere. After unlocking the door to the map room, we must say goodbye to our old friend, as we traverse deeper into this mysterious world. Soon after entering Halo's basement, two hunters block the path. Hunters were present earlier in the level, but the Warthog decided otherwise. But now we're alone. Vulnerable. Helpless. Completely unable to save ourselves from this cakewalk of a world. That's right, level's done already. Next! This level easily takes the longest to complete out of any of them. Not due to any absurd spikes in difficulty, but because of my goldfish-like attention span. Due to this inability to focus, the stage takes three whole days to complete. While this is entirely my fault, it is definitely not fun. What is fun, however, is a plane flying inside a giant catacomb in order to take the Covenant by surprise. After making the aliens a touch more open-minded, we get introduced to our next wonderful companion, the Scorpion. 
Unlike the name suggests, this companion isn't a small insect, but a tank bigger than my ego. Similar to the Warthog, the Scorpion is also invincible, meaning it should be trivial to obliterate every enemy in our way. Not long after obtaining the Scorpion, I must now fight on foot, which is honestly pretty easy. However, this stage is rather long, and not much remarkable happens until I reach this land bridge, which gives me the perfect opportunity to skip another 10 minutes of gameplay. A Banshee spawns on this bridge, and if you're playing normally, an Elite will board it and make your life a living nightmare. So instead of playing the game normally, I spent 10 minutes racing the Elite to the Banshee, which I believe is only possible if you kill him in cold blood. After murdering the man and jacking his ride, we fly it straight to the entrance to the control room, finally beating the stage. After reaching the control room, Cortana discovers that something terrible is lurking deep within Halo, and sends a strike team to stop the infinitely wise Captain Keys from unleashing it. But upon reaching the facility, it is revealed we are too late. The Flood has been unleashed. Now trapped in the Forerunner's basement with vile creatures beyond human comprehension, we must now fight through hordes of abominations for any hope of survival. Which is a lot easier than I expected. Sure, I died a few times, but that was mostly me being stupid. After escaping the facility that the Apocalypse was living in for the past millennia, our brave hero gets kidnapped by everyone's favorite Halo character, Wheatley. Considering that my only experience of this stage was on Legendary, I was dreading this. I had done it in co-op before, and it was still incredibly difficult. Needless to say, when I figured out this stage was one of the easiest things I'd ever done on Heroic Difficulty, I was pretty surprised. I really breezed through this level without anything notable happening, so I'm not going to linger on this segment. After obtaining the MacGuffin Wheatley forced me to get for him, he teleports us back to the control room to use it. Cortana, not happy about being cucked by a flying testicle, explains to us that Wheatley had tricked us into almost obliterating all life from the universe. Whoopsie! After figuring out this information, the game doesn't even give us the option to be a mass murderer, almost like it's a bad thing. Now, with everything on the planet wanting my head served on a silver platter, we have to disable Halo's power systems to prevent it from ending the world as we know it. Contrary to my experience with the previous level, I completely forgot this stage was meant to be difficult until my roommate walked by my computer and said, Good luck, which was only a sign of things to come. With attempt after attempt ending in failure, taking two steps forward after 15 respawns, this stage was an absolute slog to get through, and the game functioning exactly as I'm sure was intended doesn't help. This point. Made me Why does that not- That kills me! But it doesn't kill the top! What?! After fixing whatever it was that plagued my microphone, I persisted through the stage, and finally came to the last major group of enemies. And nothing I tried seemed to work. I'd always run out of ammo without killing nearly enough enemies, and then regret most of my life choices up to that point. Until eventually I decided, what if I ignored the enemies? And wouldn't you know, that worked on the first attempt. In order to destroy Halo, we need Captain Keys, our beloved strategic genius, to give us access to the reactor of the ship he crashed on the planet. Unfortunately, he has been captured yet again, on the same ship. This time, however, it's swarming with Flood, as well as Covenant soldiers. Once Cortana teleports us into the ship, we have to move quickly in order to rescue the captain. But the ship is four of more holes than used cheese, so it's obvious we can't continue from the inside. After swimming through a pool of what I can only imagine is grunt urine, and plowing through the chaos of the Covenant and Flood duking it out, a gravity lift brings us back aboard the ship, right into the heat of battle. With Flood pouring out of every crevice of the ship, maneuvering through is quite difficult, but when the opportunity presents itself, letting Covenant and Flood fight each other until the few stragglers are cleaned up makes things pretty easy. With this strategy, finding Keys is a cakewalk. Unfortunately, he's been baked into a flood cake and will not be walking. It's finally time to grant his death wish by channeling our inner Doom Slayer and carving out a slice. After Key's demise, escape from the ship is easy. With newfound access to a bomb that would make a nuke look like a firecracker, it's time to light the fuse and flee Halo. However, our efforts aren't that simple. Our good friend Wheatley disables the ship's self-destruct sequence, leaving us to destroy the reactor manually. With the Flood crawling over every inch of the ship, the Covenant trying to find survivors to execute, Sentinels patrolling to kill both myself and the Flood, and the ship's almost maze-like structure, it's not easy to find the reactor. And once there, the situation doesn't improve. Flood and Sentinels are ready to make the Master Chief a stain on the floor. 
After unloading more explosives than the average American carries with them for a trip to McDonald's into the reactor core, we only have 15 minutes to escape the ship, which is great because it only took me 20 minutes to find the exit. Upon boarding the Warthog, Cortana informs me that I have 6 minutes to drive 3 kilometers across a ship that's only 1 kilometer long. Ignoring those reality-shattering implications, I use my most trusted friend to get through the ship at lightning speed, ignoring any vehicular manslaughter I may have committed along the way. After stopping for a brief moment to enjoy some fireworks, I continue through the last corridor of the ship and find a craft still capable of flight. Saying a heartfelt goodbye to my only true companion and completely ignoring the chaos surrounding me, I board the ship and escape Halo. If you made it this far in the video, be sure to like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it, and I'll be making more of these soon, probably. Oh, and if you were thinking, the game was actually meant to be played on Legendary, you are factually incorrect. Covency.